you know, it's really weird sitting as a participant in this project to sit back as a backer from 2014 and look at where we've come from. This isn't a hyperbolic video. This isn't a video to talk about the latest drama, even though it definitely will be included in here. And it's not to tell you to not play the game either. I just want to express my major concern and just also tell you how I feel, where I've been. It's been a few weeks, month, maybe even plus since I posted a video. And because this channel is basically centered around Star Citizen, or at least it was, it's important that I put this out. I, well, I just haven't played. Um, I can't play. Not that I'm unable to. My machine works fine and I have the ability. My arms luckily still work. But the developers, although the ones that work in the art team, programming, coding, all that lot, fantastic people. The side of the company that deals with management, community, concerns, they're really starting to just piss me off. I support this project from a development standpoint as a project. I always have, and I probably will always do so. But I can't right now support the company financially. I don't want to support them financially because I don't want to support the decisions that the community members and, and the community management as well as the financial management team keep making. This is not to say that they're not allowed to do what they want to do. They certainly can. And I can understand and I have seen plenty of good reasons for and against their recent changes and the moves that they've made. From the roadmap removal to the changes now with buyback and CCUs, I was unaffected in both situations. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't still have an opinion on it. I have an opinion because I can see the frustration from people that were just innocently hurt. As a long time backer, you know, the BMM, the Banu Merchantman is a ship that most people from my, from my era, 2014, and maybe even further back than that, will have in their buyback. And to them, when they first got that ship eight years ago, it was only 200, what, maybe 300 pounds. That's nothing compared to the new price that it comes out at. So by changing the buyback CCUs on those limited ships, even though in writing, SIG stated they would not do so, um, they have not only gone back on their word, but they have, in my opinion, robbed their greatest and most loyal fan base. I agree that there are reasons that it can be used and abused. Abusing the buyback system and running grey market scams or just running a grey market for profit anyway is still no good. However, all I hear over and over again on Spectrum or in my personal conversations with friends is that this move was made to stop people from using the buyback service as a storage unit. And I get it. That's not, it's not, that's not the intention of the buyback system. I never thought it was. But the systems in place allowed for it, allowed for that sort of gameplay. And this, this is where the crux of this point and my video probably uh, come to a point. But before we get there, we really just have to talk about the game. I know, good little tease, but we will come back, I promise. The game is it, it's plenty playable. Um, you can definitely spawn in a ship and you can definitely go and do things. But it's now been three years with no major content at content innovations no major content patches just new locations and the inclusion of a new mission type that being Xena Threat or Nine Tails, which are again basically just the same thing it's not that I have a problem with these systems it's just that I don't enjoy them it's not to say that you shouldn't and that you definitely can't it's to say that for me it's not good enough for me I've been putting off a lot of these feelings because I just am so enthralled by the development of the game. I love Citizen Con, I love watching the development, I love I love Jared, everyone does. There's loads of people at that company that I've met personally that I, I you know, I hope all the best for. But there's someone at that company right now who I haven't seen in two years. His name merely a sound on the wind, Chris Roberts. Nowhere to be seen. 
I think that that's a shame because it's ruined my enthusiasm. And it may be half of the reason why I've sort of come to this precipice of depression when it comes to the game. I don't want to log on anymore with either of my accounts and just fly around doing aimless missions for no real reward. Of course, I can unlock new ships, but why would I unlock new ships if I already own plenty of them? And this brings me back to my point. I used the buyback system as a storage point for my ships because guess what, Sig? You didn't fucking make those ships. It's been eight years and I've got ships in there that you have no intention of actually finishing or creating. Kraken, Polaris, the New Odyssey. All those ships I have in my buyback. The Pioneer. It's there. And this recent CCU change scared me into mounting the ships I could actually fly and play with. And instead, go take those ships and put them into my hangar. What do I need, Sig, with a Polaris and a Perseus and a Kraken all in my hangar if they all loan me the same crap? I don't need four, five, six hammerheads to fly around in. I need the ships that you actually release to fly around in with the money that I've actually given you. You say time and time again that we aren't making purchases. Okay then, so why the hell are you limiting me on what I can and can't fly with the money that I have given you? This is where my frustration comes from. Not with the game, but with the decisions made behind the scenes by Chris Roberts and his management team. Why are there so many limitations on an alpha project? Why are you gatekeeping access to playable ships behind financial and paid paywalls to prevent me and others from being able to play the game regardless of your intention, just however they want? Your game is in no fit way is in no fit state to play how you might intend us to. The game is in no fit state to log on every day and do missions daily. It is not there, and it won't be there for years to come because server meshing is not on the horizon. Morphologist, you released a great video explaining where the game is and what's probably coming around the corner for 2022, and I will paste, uh, I, will, uh, I, I will put a link down below for that so you can go and check it out because it really is eye-opening. In my opinion, the game is nowhere near playable yet for a daily experience. It's great, however, when you have friends who organize and create their own events, but the game does not provide you with it. So I ask again, why does the game limit you? Why does it stop you from being able to use your credits to have whatever ship you want? Because guess what? You've given them money already. It's not going anywhere. It's because they're greedy and they want to gatekeep access to ships for FOMO, fear of missing out. I've suffered from FOMO and this game was the reason for it. I, I hate it. I hate that I spent as much as I did on this game. Not because I hate the game, because I hate how greedy they were when they took it. They changed the CCU buyback without even a mention on Spectrum, without even an update. Regardless of whether or not it was expected, regardless of whether or not it was going to come eventually, without a single mention, without a single update, without a, a feather of a warning, taking that access away from me to all the ships that I actually wanted to play and taking away the deals that people made eight years ago with you when it came to buying certain limited discounted ships. I'm sorry. I'm upset and to be honest I'm losing my train of thought because the frustration is just so out there and outrageous this is a video more about my opinion which is why it's going to be no longer than 10 minutes if you share my opinion and you agree with what I have to say then share this video put it on Twitter put a comment down below I understand if you don't agree and I understand if you think the game is playable. I am not saying the game isn't fun. I'm not saying the game isn't playable. I'm saying that the decisions made at the, higher t the, at the highest table in that company are shit. It is a psychological trick. It is nothing but predatory and it is wrong. A game is supposed to be fun. A game is supposed to be about you and your friends exploring the system, exploring the stars caves moons whatever you want it's supposed to be about adventure but at the moment it's more like an adventure in capitalism and well i don't know this makes me sad really look i think something's happened i think someone's ideology has changed either that or maybe maybe things with squadron 42 just aren't going as well as they had they'd hoped and maybe they just really want to make sure they are financially sound in case the investors come for their money cool but well, you should tell people 
You should be honest. You are an open development team. And I agree with that. You are. You're more open than any other development team I've ever met. But you still hide the most important things. Because it might affect your bottom line. Well, guess what, Sig? People aren't going to stop giving you money because they think you're failing. That isn't going to happen. Because they are already invested. There's no reason to steal nickel and dime your players and your backers because of some fear you might have or some legal issue. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because you don't tell us. I'm just, I guess I'm being too theoretical and these points are basically pointless and it's, oh, I've gone past 10 minutes now. So there you go. Basically, I just want to say I'm with everyone that was hurt by the changes, not only made with the CCU buybacks, when, when they were made months ago with the bloody, oh, every decision, whether it's the roadmap or updates to the game, the, the, the Aries Ion nerf, Jesus, look. There's a pattern that I'm only just seeing. And as a guy that was extremely enthusiastic about Theatres of War, I should have seen this coming sooner. Um, yeah, I won't be playing Star Citizen. I won't be supporting Star Citizen. I won't be giving them any money. I haven't given them money for a few years now, actually. But I won't be giving them any more to the hard concrete rule. I implore you to do the same. I hope that you can see my point. And even if you support the project and you want it to succeed, just for once, vote with your wallet to try and change the policies so that we can all enjoy a better game regardless. With a better attitude behind SIG, with better management, and with just more enthusiasm coming from the top, no matter whether we succeed or fail, money will keep rolling in as long as we're all having fun. I can't have fun now in that game because they took it away from me. Granted, you're saying, well, you shouldn't have bought those ships in the first place. What are you going to do with them? I wanted them. I wanted to play with them because I was excited to see them, whether it's alone or with a fleet of people. But they're not in the game yet, and they won't be in the game for years. So let me play with whatever ship I want. Let me do whatever it is I want in your game, in your sandbox, space sim, open world adventure. A few changes I would propose right away would be just allowing me to refuel, rearm and repair at any outpost as a criminal once more. Ruining that entire angle of gameplay for me was a hit, a sledgehammer in fact, a few months ago, years ago now even. Focus on just pure stability, remove these silly gimmicky game modes like Xenothreat Threat and Ninetales and just focus on the core gameplay that's always going to be there. Improve the mission lines, mission dialogues and the mission objectives, improve character and mission connected uh, experience and reputation improve rewards for actual gameplay, and implement very simple buy and sell mechanics so we can do things with other players in, with other players' stuff. Please, Sig, just do these small things, not big jumps. Let's get the game fun and exciting first. Anyway, I don't think this is going to get anywhere. Heck, it might not even get any views. And it's just, again, me being a a angry, talking into a microphone. I'll be playing Tarkov, Warhammer, Maybe some other fun games over on Twitch. Catch me live. Twitch.tv forward slash Doommeister. Expect to see some more video content on the channel as well, but on some other games. We will come back to Star Citizen when they release a genuine content patch with actual things to do. When I don't have to log on with my friends to make my own content every day. When just leaving a space station doesn't take an hour. Hopefully that day is sooner rather than later. But again, doesn't look like it will be. So until 2023, maybe. Um, see you in the verse. Have a good one. And thank you for listening. <laughs>